Good afternoon and welcome to Blow the Whistle, the show where we'll bring you the latest sports and action and news. I'm Max. I'm Evie. Coming up, we have a slightly different show as we're bringing you a World Cup special. The competition got underway last Sunday and we'll be diving into all the talking points so far. Yes, England are tipped to go all the way, according to the bookies. Not sure about that. And the hopes and the dreams of the fans will remain alive throughout the competition. Evie, England beating Iran 6-2, a thrilling win, first game. What did you make of it? A lot of people were saying, well, it's just a run and maybe England were a little bit complacent at times as well. I think it was a good game, obviously, from England's part, but I think the mistake we're making is just seeing them as just a run. I mm. think you could tell within the first few minutes when everyone was watching, it was kind of expected that, oh, we're going to thrash them. Mm. And it, Iran were all right. Like, yeah, it was a good game from us and we did get 6-2 result. Yeah, but scored six goals. <laughs> but I think that is the mistake from seeing all the matches, obviously Argentina and everything. Like, mm. we're just seeing these opponents as just whoever. And I think that is a mistake. Yeah, and hopefully England don't do that because you're right, because Germany losing, what, 2-1 yeah. to Japan and Argentina losing as well. So it's a really interesting point, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. What did you make of England on the goal scoring front? Because you had different players scoring, Saka, Jack Grealish, and Jack Grealish came on and played excellent. And then you've got Starman, Jude Bellingham as well. Yeah, I think that was nice to see, especially um, Bellingham obviously being as young as he is. And then Saka, I think people have kind of always put Saka kind of away from the limelight mm. and he was really good but what do you think about Kane he was kind of yeah Kane was quiet Kane yeah. was quiet but you've got to remember I think that sometimes it takes him a bit of time to get into competitions at the last World Cup he won the golden boot but that uh, you know a lot of his goals came from penalties coming when VAR was first introduced into kind of that World yeah. Cup 2018 competition I think England were playing Panama it was a single it, it was it was a similar scoreline to the first game 5-6-0 and Harry Kane get, kept getting fouled in the box and it was just penalty after penalty his goal scoring came from penalties, really, in that World Cup. It will be interesting to see. Few people are tipping him to be the Golden Boot winner again, but but we'll have to see. But there's other goal scorers in the team, isn't there? Yeah, and what do you, what are you thinking about him for the Golden Boot again? Yeah, p possibly. Who knows? Possibly. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's a difficult one. There's so many, you know, great players to, to to kind of emerge out of this World Cup, and there's also a few underdogs. You look at, I mean, of course, you know, he's well known, Kylian Mbappe, of course. You know, someone. Someone that probably will try and get there. I mean, some people are even saying Mason Mount for England, which would be someone that is just, in, you know, someone that is he, he's young and he's never really been considered to score that many goals before, but yeah. could definitely do it, you know. I think we do need to keep our minds open and kind of not necessarily get away from Kane, mm. but I think we do have to appreciate the other talent in mm. the England squad, and it is a strong squad yeah. this year. Where did you watch the game on, on Monday? I was in a lecture. Oh. It was on a TV, but... You know, it was oh, trying okay. to balance between. Okay. What about you? I was at the SU, the student oh. union, a very rowdy student union. Very jealous. There was security, but there was two <laughs> pound pints, so you can't be surprised on that. Our reporter Leo will have uh, will have more on that as well later in the show. Well, fan parks have been opening all over the world this week, and pubs have been filled to capacity with cheap deals advertised and football being showed wherever you go. Our reporter Leo has been at the Student Union getting some fans' reactions in the heart of Salford Union's social hub. The controversial World Cup in Qatar is finally underway and England have got off to a flying start, beating Iran 6-2 in their opening game. Wales in the first World Cup in 62 years drew 1-1 to USA with hopes of making it all the way to the end. I think England will go very far, um, especially from last match against Iran. Uh, that was an amazing match. Uh, top scorers as well and so yeah I generally think because of that they'll go pretty far this World Cup. And Harry Kane, do you think he'll be the top scorer? Um, I don't think Harry Kane performed as well in last match and uh, I generally think that it'll be probably top players like Saka and other players that are just like top scorers really, top players really overall in this World Cup. Uh, yeah. And England opening game, thrashing around, how would you summarise that? Oh, it was amazing. I was here at SU, uh, the uh, student union, or also known as Atmosphere, and uh, honestly, amazing, amazing atmosphere. And it was completely packed, rammed full of uh, England supporters, and it was just uh, amazing, really. As you know, the World Cup is full of controversies this year, and us at Blow the Whistle want to hear from you. So let us know your thoughts at blowthewhistle.us on Instagram and Twitter. Back to you guys in the studio. 
Shout out to Austin as well. He enjoyed England's sixth goal at the SU. Well, there's been no hiding from the fact that Qatar have faced many questions over the treatment of migrant workers and LGBTQ plus rights. There's been lots of questions surrounding fan safety and that have arisen too. I caught up with Ellie Molson from the Her Game 2 campaign, who is in Qatar vlogging her fan experience following England. Ellie, thanks for taking the time to speak to me today. Much appreciated. You're, you are live in Qatar for us. You are speaking to us in Qatar. First of all, how is it? I bet the weather's a lot nicer than England. Oh my gosh. Firstly, it's boiling. Qatar is brilliant. Honestly, it's very, very different to England, but I absolutely love it. I mean, you mentioned there how lovely it is. Of course, there's, there'd be, there's been mass criticism given to Qatar. Um, you know, they, they, they've come under increasing pressure with lots of issues with human rights groups and, and things like that. I mean, how has it actually been from a fan's point of view? Have, have you felt safe? Have you ever felt worried when you've been out and about? It's especially from like a female fan's perspective and um, reading the media, I can't lie, I was absolutely petrified. I was like, oh my God, if I show any skin, I'm going to get arrested. And if I drink, I'll be arrested and all this, that and the other. I've come out here and it's freakishly safe, like in a way where it's like this place is not real. From a female perspective, um, a lot of people saying, oh, you have to, you know, if you don't cover up, you're getting loads of trouble. That's not true. There's plenty of women who I've seen like crop tops, tiny skirts. I'm not judging, but, you know, just making the point that people really don't care as much as it's made out to be. But um, out of respect, obviously, I do cover up, but you won't get in trouble if you don't. Very interesting. And you were at England's first game this week? Oh, yeah, I was. That was mayhem. That yeah. was something else. Six How did it go? Because because there was some worry with the... There was a lot of uh, reports that, that fans couldn't get into the stadiums. Did you manage to get into the stadium OK with the ticket app and everything? Oh, it was fine. It was absolutely fine. I'm honestly starting to like not believe anything the media say. You got it. I got it. The, the queue looked a bit terrifying, but you got in within 20 minutes. And some people's apps didn't work, but that's like their own technology. And if it didn't work, they just like ask you to show what's called a hire card. And if you could show a hire card, you got in. It's very well organised here, except for food. For some reason, that's one thing they can't get right. But other than that, what they do is they have like a massive long walk to the train station. So instead of everyone like being like, well, you know, queuing up in the boiling heat, you just have to walk for like a kilometre to get to the train station. But you don't really notice because you're just singing songs, aren't you? Yeah, no, brilliant. I mean, what has the atmosphere been like? Because I'm sure I can imagine, obviously, the 6-2 win for England over Iran was was brilliant and it was a great kind of way to get, um, obviously, England's kind of group stage off. You know, it, it was a great start. It was, the atmosphere is a bit weird, actually. Like, I can't explain it. It's a bit like a fever dream. So, you know, um, where I was sat, there were loads of England fans, obviously. And um, we all stood up, so, you know, the usual. And when we scored, absolute scenes, you know how it goes. But <laughs> I've never experienced an atmosphere like it. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, because you've got all these different countries all together in one place. It's a bit weird, but quite good fun. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, how do you think England are going to do, Ellie, from, from following them so far and, um, of course, following them throughout the competition? Are you hopeful for the chances? The bookies kind of have them marked as third favourites currently. Third favourites? Oh, I'm not going to lie. Before the first match, I was a bit nervous. Um, I know a few of our players haven't been, obviously, prior to England games, haven't really been on form. I mean, as a Forest fan, and you know this, um, Harry Kane obviously wasn't great when he played us, but no. they they were on fire. And do we give the credit to England or is it Iran's lack of, you know, perform a poor performance from Iran? I think we can say it was England. Really, Ellie, as well, talk to us about the Her Game 2 campaign that you're involved with, because that does some brilliant work. And of course, with the issues that the criticism that Qatar's come under, it's been a an, an outstanding campaign to be there for for female football fans, hasn't it? Yeah, so Her Game 2, if you're not familiar with it, is a campaign to get women, especially fans, initially it was for football, female football fans, to make them feel safe and comfortable in what is, generally speaking, a very male-dominated environment. Yeah. And essentially, we partner with clubs across the country and now across the globe. 
Brilliant. Ellie, thank you very much for, for joining us and enjoy the rest of your time in Qatar and fingers crossed you can finally bring it home for England. Yes, it's coming home. Thank you very much. Here at Blow the Whistle, we want to hear from you. That's why this week we asked you to get involved over on our Instagram page at blowthewhistle.us. Yes, and here are the results. So, Mats, do you think England will go all the way? Obviously, on our social media, 68% said yes. 32% no, said no. I'm a bit disappointed in that. I thought there'd be a bit of optimism. You know, Christmas World Cup, people would be in the festive spirit, so feeling a bit more happy. Um, I don't know. Personally, I think England can go all the way, but there is better opposition out there. There is better nations out there. They've got that little bit of higher quality and I think especially in the attacking third as well that's probably with a negative head on you know me being trying to be positive then yeah of course England can can come and uh, it might come home as well well I'm going to be a little bit of a realist here I actually would say no okay just because I think there is such strong opposition and I think obviously over the past few years we've had like the Euros and, that, and I think people are still kind of riding off that buzz but I'm going to say no for this one yeah it, it's, it's it, yeah it's quite interesting. 68% though saying, yeah, that's quite a big number of, you know, more yeah. than half and, and maybe people are hopeful this year. Yeah, and I do think they have a strong chance. It's just kind of if they play the cards right and obviously it all depends on the coming of the group stages mm. and where everyone else is going to end Yeah, up. shall we have a look at the next one? Why not? How far will Wales advance? It's their first World Cup. I don't know the yeah. exact start. I probably should. It's their first World Cup in a while. It's very split. 50% group stage, 50% knockouts. What do you think? Wales is one of them, I just, obviously like you said, it's the first time in, however, who knows. There's a lot of passion riding on the, you know, yeah. the Welsh team, you kind of watch them, I think 64 years, I'm, I'm pretty sure, but you kind of watched it, um, you kind of watched them in their first group stage game and the fans were right behind yeah. them and when they sang the national anthem, the hairs kind of stood up on, on the back of my neck to be fair and I'll be hoping that Wales do well they've got two Forest players in there Nico three actually Nico Williams Brennan Johnson and Wayne Hennessy as well so fingers crossed but it'll be interesting to see should we have a look at the next one as well and who do you think will get the golden boot obviously it's funny looking Harry Kane <laughs> very funny looking people but <laughs> Kane, interesting, yeah. only 19% 19, 19 saying Kane. 19% 19 saying Kane, yeah, which surprises me. We mentioned Mbappe on the sofa mm. a few minutes ago, so potentially him. Ronaldo, of course, well, there's been so much about so Ronaldo. Much about he's Ronaldo. been, well, he's had his contract mutually terminated this week mm. by Man United away in, into club football. Only 12% for Messi as well. That surprises me. To be fair, yeah, because it is Messi. But who, who do you prefer, Messi or Ronaldo, Evie? <laughs> oh, what a question, what a question. I think, I used to say Ronaldo, mm. but you know, obviously currently, With perhaps he's tarnished his legacy and everything that's happened, obviously the past couple of weeks and especially kind of interesting how they've terminated his contract just before the World Cup. Yeah. But, mm. Very we're still gonna say Ronaldo. Still going I think Ronaldo. he has probably tarnished his legacy a bit, but he's a great player at the end yeah. of the day, great player. So look at the next one. Um, do you think the World Cup should be hosted in Qatar? I mean, it's been a question that's been asked by so many people. Of course, they've come under so much pressure with human rights issues and, and everything like that. 100% of people on our poll, and quite a lot of people voted on our poll just for the viewers to know that, 100% say no. That's a huge stat, isn't it, Evie? No, it is huge, but I have to agree with them. I think it should have never been hosted in Qatar, and I'd, I think... The fact it has, there's just so much yeah. surrounding that. And then obviously, especially FIFA as well, currently waiting. Obviously, we knew like in the summer that mm. there was going to be some changes. But the fact that just on Sunday or Saturday and all that, that the whole um, mm. One Love Band and everything. Yeah. And I just think, in my opinion, that <laughs> it shouldn't be hosted yeah. in guitar. But also, I think... What is your opinion about the, the band yeah. and everything? Yeah, I mean, that was, a you know, again in my opinion, these are completely our, our own views here, but but it, it, it's something that the FA didn't take into consideration. Yeah. They knew that there'd potentially be a punishment. All they had to do was wear it for the first game, yeah. and if Harry Kane got a yellow card, then he can take it off, and, and that's that. It, it, it makes a good enough message, but let's say that FIFA are, and, and the FA are quite spineless about it, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes for the rest of the competition, mm. for sure. I think it is interesting, though, obviously. They've told people not to wear these, and it, mm. I think... I don't know how you think, but mm. in my opinion, it's had kind of the opposite effect. It's got people talking more. Yeah, more. 
and it's obviously we saw Germany I know it's a, a little bit different about more human rights but doing the, yeah, yeah, the, the photo yes. and everything like that and so I think it is having the opposite mm. eth effect and people are speaking more and it's kind of perhaps showing Qatar in, in my opinion not the best light no no next one then if not who will win should we have a look at the results well. Try and get the results up <laughs> for us. Maybe not. Um, there we go. Quite quite a few people saying Brazil. Um, Brazil actually. I I've gone with Brazil. Have you? Eva, you've gone with France. Why France? Honestly, that was just off gut, gut instinct. So right. <laughs> <laughs> I just I've just got a feeling France. I could tell you no facts or why, mm. but I think well, this was obviously I put um, my response in yesterday yeah. but before I was going to say Argentina but we all know yeah. we all know shot how that result. went shot result so was that a fluke or is that just how they're going to perform very interesting why did say. you say Brazil Max uh, Brazil uh, I think that I think that they've just got that quality I think everybody says Brazil a lot of the time and our floor manager Leo saying Argentina as well um, so you know but then they had the of course the shot results so um and maybe Sam as well, who, who kind of is behind the scenes and blow the whistle, is agreeing with me and saying Brazil. Brazil seems like the favourite. Yeah, so, definitely. Yes, yeah. Let's have a look at those. And, uh, and fingers crossed that, um, who knows? Well, finally now, then let's take a look at this week's Unisport. Our reporter Sam Armitage has more. Yes, World Cup fever is taking over Salford Uni and that's kind of spread across the Uni sports teams who have been playing in cup competitions themselves this week. We start off with the football and unfortunately whilst the first team were unable to get through past Lancaster, the third team were able to successfully get past York St. John's away from home on penalties, four goals to three. On to basketball and the side continued their unbeaten run to start the season, defeating Man Met thirds with ease 78-54 to last night in the Salford Sports Centre. After the game, I caught up with our MVP, Jack Ellis, to hear his thoughts on the team making the quarterfinals of the Cup. I am stood with Jack here, who we have decided is our player of the game. Jack, you're through to the, uh, to the quarterfinals. You've just beat Man Met Freeze by 24 points. What are your initial thoughts on the game? Uh, I'm, I'm obviously thankful that we got through. I, I, I think the team played well for periods. I, I still think there's places where we can improve. I don't feel like they should have scored 54 points on us, but, but we'll get back in training and we'll work on it for next week. Yeah, despite scoring 78, I thought it was a bit of a tough shooting night first for you guys. A few of your shots didn't go down, but the main thing I pointed out um, on the commentary for you today was how much you facilitated and set up your players. Um, your main job on this team isn't to score, but how much pride do you take in being the guy that can set people up and to get some points for your players. Oh yeah, it, 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 it's, it's always great for me as a point guard to be able to to give it to one of my players and, and they scored a basket. Obviously the stat sheet shows it, but it, it's not just about that. Like if, the if the team are moving well, then it's just easy to find people and they, they make my job easy sometimes. Yeah, definitely. You were playing with a lot of confidence there, dropping a few flashy passes here and there. Could that be to do with the fact that you guys are now 6 and up? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it always helps to be on a, on a winning run, and obviously the team are full of confidence right now. You guys are definitely a close knit bunch, as uh, as we can hear. Um, you guys six and zero. How long do you think this um, this this unbeaten run can go on? Fingers crossed. The end of the season. We just got to keep the energy up, keep the confidence going, and I think we can do it. Well, good luck uh, for the rest of the cup run. Good luck for the rest of the league run. Uh, this is Jack, our MVP of today. Thank you. Both rugby league and union sides were given a bye in their cup competition. And the Rugby League side defeated Lancaster in a friendly yesterday, 60 points to four. A huge win which will give them momentum towards the rest of the season. And finally, in netball, the first team were unable to progress in the Cup, losing by two points at Bangor Seconds. However, the third team continue their unbeaten run in the league, defeating Chester for the second time in two weeks. They've won four games in a row and sit atop the league. That's all from Uni Sports this week from me. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much, Sam. That's all we've got time for this week and we'll keep you up to date. It's uh, goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Follow Thank us you. on Instagram at blowthewhistle.us. Bye-bye.